I am Dr. Philip McMillan, and uh, thank you for joining me as I continue to look to unusual patterns across the pandemic and see whether or not we can make sense of it together. Firstly, we are making reference to Joe Biden and the fact that he has recently been diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. And we do wish him support. We wish him all the best. The good news is that most types of uh, advanced prostate cancer are very treatable. And if he has a hormone sensitive type, then that gives a lot of scope for him to have treatment for a long period of time. Whilst we reflect on that, however, there is still a question that needs to be answered. And what's surprising is that everyone keeps on stepping around the issue. And the question is not whether Joe Biden over 80 could get prostate cancer at that stage four. It does happen. Um, and it's certainly not uncommon, but it's not the most common presentation. The bigger question is about trajectory and trends. Are we seeing more aggressive prostate cancers presenting on balance later and being more difficult to treat? And that's the question that is in a lot of people's minds because it feels as though people are talking around the question rather than trying to address it. And I am myself very curious because I have been looking and observing for this kind of pattern for a number of years. For those people who are not aware, almost two years ago, I put together this presentation with regards to what I anticipated would be a cancer explosion. If you are interested in the science and to why I did that, please click in the link below. We have easily a number of modules which go through all of the aspects as to why I anticipated this kind of pattern. So it's very, very important. But that's the perspective that I'm looking at the situation with. And as I said, when you look at the news reports at the moment, fresh cancer diagnosis raises questions about his health in the White House. Now, that is a question as to how he, when he got diagnosed, whether or not it was while he was in office and it was suppressed, or if it was after. That, to me, is a secondary question. The bigger question to me is, when did it present initially? And how aggressive is it? That is because it could be representative of a trajectory that we would be seeing across the population. And without people raising awareness of this, the population is not able to think or see the relevance of this point. The reason they don't want to do that, you would think, is it's obvious to do that, but there is an elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is, if that is occurring, what is the mechanism? If it's because of COVID, how do you know? And could there be another factor that's involved? So let's get into some very basic things. But um, before I start, just a reminder that coming up, uh, in just about 10, 11 days time is our first conference for the year, Hidden Drivers of Post-COVID Dysfunction, bringing experts across the world. Look in the description for the link and join us in this journey of exploration of the research and the science. So let's start with just a few things that I think are quite relevant in terms of understanding what really is happening with regards to prostate cancer. What is it? What are the basics and what do we mean when we say stage four? So I'll just give you some insights into the science. Prostate gland. In men, as you should know, men only have a prostate. Women don't have one. And it sits right under the bladder, right here. That's where the prostate gland is. And it helps in terms of seminal fluid, semen in terms of ejaculation and so on. And so this is the main purpose of it. And this is the gland on either side, all the way around the bladder neck. And when men are passing urine, they pass it through here. And this is why if men have problems with their prostate, like if it's getting bigger, benign prostatic hypertrophy, 
it can obstruct this pathway and they therefore have problems with either the flow, the duration or retention of urine. So the prostate is an important issue and it has been largely taken not as seriously by men, which is why prostate cancer is one of the important conditions. Women where breast cancer is quite relevant tend to be a little bit more um, proactive with looking for lumps and so on. Men tend not to be. And so therefore they are more likely to have issues with delayed presentations of things like cancer. And when we look at this here, again, this is now what prostate cancer would look like. And you have here again, the prostate gland just below the bladder here. These are the kidneys. And this is showing you a tumor that is growing within the prostate gland. Now, um, this is what they have found in terms of President Biden. And they would have taken a sample of this to look at in the lab to try and understand the characteristic of the cells that are affecting or causing the prostate cancer because it's relevant in terms of treatment. And that is very important to note because there are multiple treatment modalities available, especially if these cells are sensitive to the use of hormones. So when you're thinking about staging of any cancer generally, there are just some general principles to remember. And there is stage one here. And this is again showing you the cancer on one side of the prostate. This, as I said, is the bladder, the urethra. These are the seminal vesicles connected to the testicles as well. So the cancer is located on one side, that's stage one. If the cancer has spread locally to both sides, that's considered to be stage two. If you see the cancer spreading to the seminal vesicles or locally around breaking through the capsule of the prostate, that would be considered stage three. If you then have cancer that is spreading in the lymph nodes as well as distant spread, that would If the cancer is spreading even to lymph nodes here, some involvement, that would be stage three. Metastatic spread often is considered stage four. And those are just the general principles of cancer. It's very similar for all kinds of cancer as to why this is occurring in this way. Um, before I continue, I just want to test something. I've, I've got something here. Um, Oh, there it is. It does work. Uh, live comments appear on the screen. Don't say anything too strange, please. Um, uh, this is just a new feature that has has come along. So um, yes, and so these are the the stages, and I'll give you a closer look with regards to the stages of the cancer. And again, as I said, stage four represents metastatic spread. This is where it spreads in the bloodstream and it can spread to multiple different organs. So technically what he has is stage four cancer. The question that I have is whether or not he has stage four cancer, which is metastatic spread with infiltration of the lymph nodes or whether or not it is a single nodule in his prostate with metastatic spread. And that's very important to me because it tends to indicate whether or not we have a more aggressive form of cancer. And that's why I think that's an important point to try and clarify, because this is what people have in their minds. They know a lot of people who just seem to have stage four cancer. Let me clarify a point that gets people um, confused. They, they tend to mention this concept of turbo cancer. And turbo cancer gives the impression that the cancer is very fast growing. That's not really what the problem is. The problem is that people are presenting at initial diagnosis with stage four cancer. And that's similar to what happened with President Biden. This is why I think it's a significant flag. 
presenting initially with stage four cancer suggests that there may be a mechanism that is driving cancers from just going through the normal stage of localized spread, lymph node spread before distant spread. And if that is occurring, it has a very important connection to the ability to treat because if once it has spread, you can't cure it. You can only control the disease. Here is the classification based on a Gleason scoring system. And um, essentially, when they looked at uh, President Biden's grade of cancer, he had stage grade five. And in this one here, it starts from whether or not it looks in the normal pattern, normal glands, a bit more stroma between the glands, then you have distinct infiltration, then you have irregular masses, and then you have just complete um, breakdown of normal formation. So he has stage grade five Gleason and a score of nine. So that is an aggressive prostate cancer. Now, apparently they said that it is hormone sensitive. And so therefore, if it is hormone sensitive, that gives him a better chance with regards to managing the disease, but not curing it. And when they speak about the spread, he has got um, prostate cancer that has spread to the bone. And again, looking at multiple different kinds of cancers, when you look at prostate here, it will tend to go to brain, bone, liver, and lungs, very similar to what happens with breast cancer. Colon cancer tends to go to bone, liver, and lungs. Pancreatic cancer tends to go primarily to liver and lungs. So lungs tend to be almost always involved as well as largely the liver. And prostate cancer tends to have a predilection for going to bone. And once it gets there, you can manage the disease but you can not necessarily get rid of it. And that's where the importance is. As I said, when we look at cancer at the moment, what we have sitting around us seems to be more aggressive cancers in the sense that they have already spread distant organs by first presentation. That's what's causing the clinical problem. Not necessarily that they're growing faster. It's just that the horse has already bolted by the time the person presents to their doctor for the first time. Why am I mentioning all of this? Because there may be a mechanism around more aggressive and spreading cancers related to the pandemic. And the elephant in the room is pointing to IgG4. This is a very specific antibody. It's a tolerant antibody. It sets your immune system to stand back. This is therefore a problem because in order to get cancer, the final phase of failure needs to be in the immune system. And I, I have a, a slide that helps to understand how I look at it. And you'll, you'll see this more from the, the cancer presentation if you want to see the multiple layers of cancer protection. And you will see that the final layer is immunity. So all of this has to fail before someone gets cancer because cancer cells form all the time, but your body has multiple ways of getting rid of it. The immune system has to fail or be overwhelmed in order for cancer to occur. And so this is why IgG4, with its immune suppressive tolerant uh, antibody impact, is so relevant in the context of cancer and cancer spread. The final point that I will make is the fact that we are now finally getting research that gives us clarity on these points. As I say, the only people who seem to be actually doing this kind of research are the Japanese. I'd spoken about this previously. And what they found is that repeated COVID vaccination was a poor prognostic factor in pancreatic cancer. Now, they recognize it was a single center cohort study, and this would limit how well it could be interpreted. And this is a preprint article, so it's not yet peer reviewed. So there may be issues with regards to what they are finding. However, 
what they clearly noted, and I will show you the, the image here so that you know that um, it's not just my opinion, is that when they looked at the outcomes, is here you have patients who only had zero to two vaccinations in black. This is a timeline, probability of survival, more than three vaccinations, significant difference in terms of mortality. This is very serious. And you can see it here. It seems to be connected with IgG4. If you have higher levels of IgG4, there seems to be a worse prognosis with regards to pancreatic cancer. This is the elephant in the room. And I understand that people don't want to look at it. It is concerning. It can be frightening. I understand that. But there is a responsibility to do the research. Because if that research is relevant, we need to find ways to try and address these issues. Have to identify who is at risk. If it is that multiple boosters puts people at risk, you have to screen them more frequently. But you have to acknowledge it in order to mitigate it. What we are seeing now is a failure to acknowledge issues, and that failure is causing people to suffer long-term and terminal consequences because no one wants to address the elephant in the room because it could get people upset. That's part of the reason why I think the leadership in, it, in effect has to be changed because those people who are in leadership who are ignoring these issues, who are sidestepping these issues, are not doing anybody in their population any service. For all the people who don't quite understand what is going on and get upset that I'm asking questions, you should be glad that I'm sticking out my neck. It would be better for you to be able to laugh at me in a few years' time and say, look, look at that doctor who was worried about all these things, and it turns out that it was nothing. That would be wonderful, and I would accept those criticisms. But to not address the question, to fail to do something about it, when we can see people at the highest level being affected, that is unacceptable. The questions are simple. Across the world, if you pick one section, one, one, if we just pick prostate cancer, the questions are simple. Are we seeing more cases of stage four presentation? Are the cancers now presenting more advanced Gleason scores? Are they becoming more and more difficult to manage? These are the kind of issues that we really need to be addressed. And if they're not addressed, that's where the failure is. And it should not be accepted. Have a great evening.